so sunny. So pardon my appearance. I'm still in my pajamas. It's Saturday morning. The sun is in my eyeballs. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm going to give you a quick little tour of what the garden looks like. It is uh, starting to come together. Uh, it's just the impatient part of the year where like you really, really want things to be ready if they're not. <laughs> And we still have, I think it sounds like we might have a frost tonight, so, um, yeah. We still have a few weeks left until I can really, like, ramp up, but I figured I'd show you, now that everything's kind of built, I can show you, like, what is gonna go where and what we have going on already, and then, um, yeah, we can kind of see how things go, um, as time goes on, so, yeah, let's go. So this garden tour is brought to you by the sounds of suburbia. So if you hear any cars or anything, it's just because I live in a suburban neighborhood and there's lots of birds out today too, which is kind of nice. Um, yeah, there's a car. Anyway, um, so this is our compost, right? Um, and it's kind of nice because we have like steps up to the kitchen here. So um, I could just come out here and dump any compost in it. This little planter, which kind of looks sad, you might remember this from my balcony last year, um, that is going to be covered in butterfly peas, hopefully. I have a couple started. They're kind of struggling right now. I, they're inside in my little greenhouse setup, um, but my hope is that I can get them to climb up here and kind of cascade over the fence so that, um, you know, we get some prettiness. Uh, don't mind this weird bucket here. I need to clean that out and move it. Um, but this little planter my dad actually gave us and, um, cause they didn't need it. And I was like, yeah, I'll take an extra growing space. Why not? So, um, right now I don't have a lot in it. I planted some sweet pea greens and then, um, just these sad clearance plants. So some curly parsley and some some sort of time. It wasn't labeled, but obviously it's time. It, they both look like they had, you know, seen better days, but for $2 a piece, you know, they'll do fine. <laughs> Might as well take advantage of some of those clearance plant sales. I have a penchant for trying to save sad looking plants. <laughs> um, there's lots of cool stuff growing around in the yard. You can kind of see like over here is some um, crow garlic, um, which I've already harvested like a ton of. You can kind of see where I chopped off pieces. Um, so I've been drying that so that I can use that in stuff. Um, and yeah, there's all kinds of interesting things growing in the grass. So yeah, um, there's violets back there too, which I love. Um, here are two different kinds of mint. I just grabbed these. Um, when I was feeling kind of bummed about things taking too long because it's early spring. Um, so one of them is apple mint and the other one is mojito mint, which is one that we use a lot. And I actually have another plant of this too. Um, but we're kind of hoping that they will take over these little pots and then we can make tea. We're big tr tea drinkers in this house. So um, having mint very easily accessible will be nice. Um, so these planters used to be on the balcony at, um, our apartment. These were my, like, new fun thing for last year, and then we ended up moving to a place with a yard, so. <laughs> um, so they have become the kind of little, this is the little herb garden on the side here. So I got a ton of parsley when I was, once again, having that antsy time. So that's all this nice greenery here. And then there's some other things in here that are perennial, and I'm kind of curious to see if they come back. They're looking rough right now, but, you know, it's still really early, so we'll see. Like, um, this, uh, beer garden sage had started, like, it looks like it's starting to try to come back. There's some little sprouts there. I don't know what all this stuff is. It's probably weeds, so I'll probably have to weed these, because there's a ton of these little sprouts in here, but that's not, I'm not worried about it right now. Um... But yeah, so some nice flat leaf parsley. I'll probably move some of these later one because I'll want to put like other herbs in these little beds here. Um, but like I want to dry a bunch of parsley because that's obviously a pretty heavily used herb. So um, I may relocate some of these to other places in the yard because these bush out pretty big. Um, and also swallowtail butterflies really like them. So good stuff. Um, this time is coming back. 
this was planted here last year i don't know what kind there's no label anymore but i really love thyme if you couldn't tell because it's in my name um there's some dead looking rosemary and lavender so we'll see if those come back i did try to like trim them back but i'm not very good at like telling where you're supposed to trim things back to <laughs> so i might have just completely ruined them and if so i'll just get a new plant it's not that big of a deal but i'll probably look more into that this year so that i don't destroy everything <laughs> um i need to add some more dirt <laughs> to this one because there is some sort of hole and my concern is something might be trying to live in there do we dare look do we dare look do we dare look okay i don't see anything I think maybe it's just like maybe water comes down from somewhere or I don't know but I am gonna <laughs> fill in that hole uh, but this is oregano yeah so dead oregano this oregano is coming back I think that's like a golden oregano I'm assuming maybe maybe it's not no that looks like golden oregano we'll see um, and then of course more of that parsley Here's some chives that came back from last year, and it's kind of cool. You can see um, some little spruits coming up. And then I think savory is planted under this. I vaguely remember planting some of that in this pot. So, yeah, kind of cool. They're just kind of like all tangled together in there. Love that. This is another clearance find. I believe this is also the same kind of mojito mint as that big one over there but uh, sad, but once again, $2, so you know, it'll come back. It just needs a little bit of time, um, and it seems to like this spot. It's doing a lot better already. Um, I just kind of pruned all those things. This is some sort of lily that was here already. I'm just leaving it there, you know, uh, but you can see some of the violets are starting to come in here, and they're all over the place in this yard. And this is the next little herb section. I put some, this is rue. Um, these are some sad cilantro. Uh, tricolor sage. I don't know what any of these dead little sticks are. Even if I end up replanting them, I'm trying to leave roots in so that these planters' soil starts getting better. No idea. This looks like maybe some rosemary. Probably another rosemary. <laughs> um, that's dill. Uh, and this is another sage that I cut back that isn't doing anything. Who knows? I got one of these bird feeders. I don't know that it's really working because it's so low to the ground. Um, but all of our other windows are super high up, so I don't know. We'll see. I might have to move that one. And then I got this whole section here. <laughs> I'm really trying to use the space, huh? Um, these are some mints from last year, so I'm curious to see if they come back. Uh, this one's berries and cream, and then this one's probably a mojito, because that's, like I said, kind of our, like, standard. Uh, but yeah, you can see more violets just kind of, like, everywhere. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna see if they come back. If not, empty the pots, put something else in there. A lot of these plants struggled a lot because we moved, um, so, yeah. And then these are my berries. So I bought some berry plants online. I want to start establishing some perennial plants, like edible perennial, perennials, like berries, so that um, when my wife and I have our own house, because we're not, this is not our house, this is our friend's house. Um, we want to, you know, I want to have some stuff that's started so that I can put them in the ground when, you know, we get to that point and already have some like nice established plants. So this is a black lace elderberry, which is the one that has like this black, like almost black foliage and then the flowers are pink um so i'm gonna see if i can kind of cultivate a bigger bush in these big uh, fabric pots and then this one i don't remember the variety oh here wildwood elderberry so yeah i ordered these online because um from what i read you're supposed to have two different kinds of elderberries to properly get them pollinated so i got two very different kinds um and then these are black raspberries once again got these online they're called ohio treasure um they're doing pretty good they like this spot so yeah since i've moved them outside they seem pretty happy um i know it's really really shady here right now but it is it gets sunny back here for pretty much from noon until sunset so it's still plenty of sun um 
for this stuff. And then, surprising everyone, this is potatoes. Um, so if you were at all watching my old videos, I had the potato battle in the community garden with the potato beetles, the Colorado potato beetles, and, uh, yeah, I decided to give it another try, so, um, yeah, we're gonna do pots of potatoes on the side here, see what happens, if it works out great, if not, it's not that big of a loss, I can just buy potatoes, <laughs> it's still worth a try though. Um, and then here we have a mulberry, this is also a mulberry that I had from last year, so yeah, just trying different fruit. Um, thought it would be interesting, so pop those in here. This guy is my sad um, fig that I've had for a while. It did really, really badly after we moved, and I cut it back thinking that's what it wanted, and I think I did too much. <laughs> um, so I'm worried that I murdered it, but we will see. Um, maybe it will come back, but yeah, it was looking really, really bad. Um, and, uh, yeah, if I lost it, it's okay. Um, it wasn't a very healthy plant in the first place, and once again I was like, oh, I gotta fix it, I can try, but it, yeah, it never really took off in a way that I felt was working, so, yeah. I did just see that this is broken. <laughs> My fighter pit. Oh no. That sucks. Well, I guess, yeah, that's my fault. It kind of looks like it rusted. Oh well. Okay, so that is the shady area, and now on to the sunny part of the yard. Um, just like quick over here, we have this cool little thingy, and that is a new fig tree that I got. It is a brown turkey fig. I thought it's interesting because the leaves are way, way different. It is kind of cold for it to be outside, but I wanted to see what happened. Uh... Yeah, it's sad. Um, and then I got these other, I think one of them's bee balm and the other one is, what's this? Oh, a uh, coneflower. Uh, once again, clearance finds. Um, there are, there is growth. I think they just had them on clearance because um, they looked sad. So, you know, whatever. Here is the little greenhouse. I'm using the same little shelf greenhouse that I had at the apartment uh, because it ain't broke, you know? Um, so right now, mostly in here, you can see I have all my tomato starts. They kind of struggled. I'm kind of figuring out a new um, seed starting situation here because I have room to have a little indoor spot. And I brought these out into the greenhouse and then the greenhouse kind of gets hotter in this spot because it's against, you know, the wall and in full sun, which it wasn't before when it was on the balcony because it didn't get sun all day. Um, so some of them got a little scalded. You can kind of see. I'm really sad because I was really excited about this variety, but it's been kind of stunted and I don't really know if it's going to come back. I'm trying to give it a chance, but it's, uh, yeah, you can kind of see the difference in size between the ones that had a really, really hard time and, you know the ones that are doing a lot better but you know once again everything's an experiment if I have to buy some plants it's not the end of the world for me like I can afford to so I'm just trying to learn as I go here um because it's a completely new place and things are different even though I've been gardening for years you know things are different in different places and you just have to learn um but yeah so I have mostly tomatoes in there there's a couple eggplants that struggled uh there's a couple eggplants that struggled but mostly uh tomatoes these are my peppers. Once again, same deal. They kind of struggled. They got a little sun scald and then they got a little cold and some of them didn't really quite make it super great, but they certainly are trying. <laughs> um, and you know, some of them are getting these like nicer, healthier leaves. So I'm hoping that that will continue. I've got a mix. They're mostly not hot peppers. Um, so i you know, I like to have some pretty hot peppers as well, so I'll probably still be purchasing some starts, but, um, yeah, they're certainly giving it a go. <laughs> and then down here, it's mostly, like, my squashes and cucumbers and stuff. I usually start them, um, to see if I can get them going before 
they would need to go out, but I also end up direct selling a lot anyway, so yeah, we'll see. They haven't really picked up too much, so I'm not like, I think I've seen, I saw like here, this one uh, somewhere in here, there, no, here, you can see that little green sprout. Like, that's the first thing that I saw of this whole sewing business, that, like, wave that actually came up, so, um, I have a source to buy cucumel and starts, I have a source to buy most of these, and some of them, you know, they'll be fine direct sewed here, I have a long enough growing season that it's not a problem, so, yeah, and then same deal down there, that was my next wave of sewing that I did, all those white tags. That's kind of how I keep track of when I sew things, is I use different color tags or like a different color pen or something. Um, so yeah. So that's all that started there. I got some calendula. And then inside I have three whole trays of more stuff that I started. So yeah, I'm just kind of trying to keep constant waves. Um, you know, doing my best to not have to buy absolutely everything, but, like, I know I'm still gonna have to buy some plant starts. It's just inevitable. That's fine. Here, um, so right now, looks kind of bare. I did plant some bulbs. Um, there's, uh, crocus, and then those, like, really sad-looking, um, hyacinth bulbs. <laughs> you can see the green sticking out. Um, yeah, I don't really anticipate any any of those are going to grow this year. They might be just for next year, but it's kind of nice just to have them in there. Uh, the main thing that I'm planning on putting in here is it's going to be sunflowers up along this wall, um, which I know is going to shade my window, but that's fine. Um, I'm going to mostly plant shorter ones. I might put a couple tall ones in just for funsies, <laughs> um, but mostly short ones and then I think in front of them, I'm going to do a line of huckleberries if they grow. I have those started in my little greenhouse, or my little seed setting starting area, which is in this window. Uh, but you can't see it because it's sunny. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of the plan for this area. It's going to be sunflowers and huckleberries. This is my little table. We've got these nice little chairs. Nice to be able to sit out in the garden. And then let's go look at the beds. So I'm going to go bed by bed here. We've got four 3 foot by uh, 12 foot beds. If you watched the first video from this year, um, I kind of put in the, the, you know, a little bit about how they were built. Um, I used a TikTok tutorial and it worked out really well. They're really sturdy. Um, they've been working well so far and uh, yeah, they, it was nice to be able to actually be able to put in some raised beds here. Um, so bed number one, there's nothing really exciting happening yet. I do have this trellis. It is an A-frame frame trellis, and I have some, like, middle supports here. The plan is that this will be the tomato bed. Um, and you can see that little cute little um, stool thing that I got at the thrift store that is a little mushroom. I love it. Um, right now, the only thing that I have in here are some overflow uh, uh, lettuces. That I had started inside so you can kind of see them. Um, something's been coming through and eating some of these so <laughs> there are some missing um, but yeah so this is Merlot lettuce and then this is what's it called Tom Thumb just little tiny guys. Um, yeah so I just figured I would pop those in there because it's going to be a little bit till the tomatoes can go in anyway especially since mine are eeny weeny. <laughs> Um, so might as well use some of the space. Um, we'll see if these lettuces even take off. I'm hoping that once it gets a little bit warmer consistently, um, they'll do a little bit better. Um, but yeah, I have at least probably at least a month until I put tomatoes out anyway, so that gives them plenty of time to go, and even if they're still there when the tomatoes go in, it'll be fine. Um, so my plan for, uh, dealing with, um, you know, tying up the tomatoes is I'm going to do the, like, string method. So I have, you know, this top... I did it last year. You kind of have, like, your top support, and then you tie a string down, connect it. You have extra at the top, so then you can let it down as the tomato gets taller. Um, that worked pretty well for me last year, even though I didn't really keep up with my garden that well. Um, but I want to give it another chance, you know, now that I have a garden that I can literally go to twice a day and it doesn't really interrupt my life um so yeah i'm excited for tomatoes 
Um, bed number two here is going to be mainly cucumbers-ish. Um, so <laughs> this is an arch trellis that I bought online. It was only about a hundred bucks. I know people have like other ways of making them, but this was the one that made the most sense to me. All of these trellises are able to be taken down when we move um, so that the, my roommate, my friend who owns the house can like still do whatever he wants with these beds. He doesn't have to keep them the same way that I had them. Um, yeah, so kind of the plan here. There's only onions in here right now. You can kind of see them lined up along here. There's some little onions. I don't remember which is which. One of them is white and then that bed, I th one of them has, one bed has red onions and one has white and I don't remember which is which. <laughs> um, but yeah this trellis is gonna be cucumbers um i haven't decided precisely <laughs> what the plan is i did put this net up i finally got one that's big enough it's actually a little too big um i don't know if i'm gonna do cucumbers on both sides or if i'm gonna do cucumbers one side cucumelons on the other side i was thinking of maybe doing that but then i also have to figure out what to put on this side of the arch trellis and then I'm thinking like peppers and um, eggplant and like stuff that I'm just gonna have like a few of each kind of plant will go in this open area I think I might have also planted garlic in the middle there but I honestly don't remember I shoved garlic in a bunch of places in here and then this whole bed will be beans of some sort so the plan with the arch trellis is I do have like red noodle, oops, <laughs> I do have red noodle bean seeds. So the plan is, you know, grow the noodle beans up over, they'll hang down, it'll look cool. Um, and then bush beans, I mostly grow bush beans. So um, there'll be a bunch of bush beans in here. I also have edamame to grow. Um, so I'm gonna fill it up right now though. It is full of, you know, cold weather veggies. So there's kohlrabi right here. They're really, really tiny. Um, Grand Duke hybrid. There's some like pak choy type things. There's a purple one and then this one's called joy choy. Look how nice those look shiny in the sunlight. Um, we've got some graffiti uh, cauliflower, which are the purple kinds of cauliflower. Uh, Romanesco. And then cheddar cauliflower, so that's like the yellow cauliflower. I did lose one of those, bummer. Um, this is broccolini right here. Uh, I think the rest of it is like some form of broccoli type thing. And then maybe, I think these are cabbage. Um, just like a small cabbage. So beans I don't usually put out until like the end of May-ish. Um, and even then, like if I'm still harvesting this stuff, um, it's not a big deal because the beans will take a little bit to sprout up. I'm kind of hoping that it'll be a good little succession there of like, you know, these are finishing up. They'll kind of help shade the green beans as they're germinating and then, um, you know, pull these out, chop them off and the beans will take over. And yeah, I'm trying to do a little bit more of that kind of stuff and being really smart with the space. So, um, yeah, we'll see how that goes. I've never been very conscious of that, so that's kind of some of my goal for this year. And then this last bed is kind of greens, question mark, and other various things. Right now it is mostly greens. I did have some issues with pests. Uh, I'm assuming some sort of rabbit or other greens eating thing, because there are things that are mowed down right to the ground. These are galaxy lettuce that I had planted. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, and also uh, I've lost some spinach, <laughs> um, but I did luckily plant like a hell of a lot of spinach. You can see there's one that was chopped off, um, but all these little green sprouts in here are all spinach that I just kind of like randomly sowed here, so um, I'm hoping to get some more in there. Through this entire center of this bed are garlic, so you can kind of see these taller sprouts coming through. Those are garlic. Um, but yeah, this bed is, it, it's still kind of like not magnificent yet, but you can see some of the lettuce is poking through. These are ones that I planted. Um, but yeah, they're definitely getting nibbled. 
Um, I put some cat fur in this bed in hopes that it will help deter uh, those little pesties from eating all of my lettuce. I don't mind sharing plants with other animals because, you know, they're hungry too. I just <laughs> need them to let the plants get big enough that they can survive um, and that I can get some too. <laughs> That's kind of where I'm at with it. It's like, it's fine if they want some, but like, let me have some too, bud. I planted it and I'm taking care of it. Um, so other stuff that I have planted in here, I planted matcha, like corn salad. Haven't really gotten much sprouting happening there. I don't really know what's going on with that. The arugula, however, is starting to come up. Um, look at all those little sprouts. So that's exciting. Um, tender green mustard. It looks like maybe there's a couple of those coming up. I put some little baby kales in here, so they should start coming up. Um, and yeah, you can see some little sprouties. Pak choy under here. They're starting to emerge. Uh, more kale. This is black magic kale. It's really pretty. The leaves are already darker. Um, and then this little trellis guy has peas on it, which are starting to come up. So you can kind of see little guys. Uh, there's more over there too. You can kind of see them. Uh, and then on this side, it's still the same kind of deal. Um, underneath these, so these are decorations for the garden, but I did put them in here to try to um, weigh down these papers. And then underneath, I sowed carrot seeds. I'm just trying to give them a better chance at germinating. Um, there's some beets in here, um, beets, carrots, and then down here are some radish right here. You can see their little sprouties coming up, so that's exciting. Um, these are French French breath? No. Redhead radish. Oh, there are some French French breakfast. I like those because they're real tiny. So, yeah. This is probably the most active bed right now, and it's starting to awaken as we're having some warmer days. Oh, God. <laughs> that pak choy looks so nice. Uh, these sunny days that we've been having have been great for the stuff that I do have out here. Um, over here, this bed is planted completely with the circular bed completely full of tomatoes and not tomatoes <laughs> this bed is completely full of strawberries and pine berries um i got bare root um they're in there you can't really see them but yeah <laughs> hopefully they'll come up uh, i haven't ever had a lot of luck with bare root strawberries but i did follow all the instructions so i'm hoping that they come up soon and hopefully we'll have strawberries and pine berries. I think both varieties are ever bearing, so we should get at least two flushes. Um, and yeah, excited for more fruit. And then, so this trellis that I made, um, we got garden fencing from Tractor Supply. I think it was like $50 for this, uh, I can't remember how long it is, 50 foot roll maybe? And then these like purple step-in stakes. Um, so yeah, it was a pretty cheap option. The plan for this section is it's going to be like melons and squash and stuff along the ground and then hopefully like lufa and maybe runner beans along the back. Um, trying to utilize some vertical space so that I can get some stuff like that. Um, I'm not going to plant too many lufa because if they do take off, um, they really go. <laughs> I would like to put ma multiple things on this. but. What the hope is, is that we'll have, like, this nice, lush, like, greenery along the back instead of staring at the white plastic fence. <laughs> uh, we got some more chimes here. Here's a little birdie. Um, yeah, so that's plenty of space to plant all that kind of stuff, though. It'll be really nice. And then this is my little stump. That's where those little decorations that I have laying down my carrot coverage uh, go. But yeah, so little stump. There's mountain mint here, which is kind of doing eh. Some chamomile. Some of my very, very favorite thyme. This is called foxley thyme. I talk about it every year. It's so pretty. It just gets these little, like, white patches. I love it. And then there's some bronze fennel back there, which kind of just blends in with the dirt, but I promise it's there. Bronze fennel. And then the last kind of section here is this long strip of dirt that goes all the way down to here where you can kind of see my little um 
what's it called? Rain gauge. <laughs> um, so this is all going to be flowers, because you know how I like my flowers. So, yeah, just a whole long strip of flowers. So kind of what I did is I did scatter just like a fuck ton of flower seeds. And then um, as I've been finding things, I've been popping them in the ground to kind of fill it out. So that's kind of what I like to do. So there's some um, alyssum. I think this is like a primrose. Uh, I don't remember what this is called. <laughs> um, but yeah, just filling it out. So, yeah. That is the garden right now, as of April 8th, and I can't wait to see what ends up happening as we go through the season here. This is going to be so beautiful when it's all lush and green, um, and yeah, can't wait to share it with you.